We just arrived here in London yesterday and we were able to see the major parts of Westminster, which I'm really happy about. You see, before we came here, I broke up parts and section of the city of London for us to explore. And today we're supposed to go to the section where Buckingham Palace is located. But since the weather is nice and sunny today, we decided to explore the part where the Tower of London is located instead. Because it's kind of far from our hotel, we need to take the subway or the tube to get there. But before we do, we're going downstairs to check out the complimentary breakfast this hotel offers. So, it's a good thing we have this kind of plug. This plug is only good in um, England, I guess. Because normally in Europe, their plugs are like this. This one right here. Let's see, there you go. But apparently here, the plug is like this. It's a good thing we had one of these. Because if not, I won't be able to charge my stuff. Anyway, it's time for breakfast. So this is the complimentary breakfast in our hotel. I was expecting sausages or some kind of meat even some eggs, but they don't have them as part of the breakfast. You'll have to order them separately. All they have are these, pastries. It's okay because we want to eat out anyway, but since this is free, why not? More poster. After breakfast, we headed to the nearest subway to catch the train, heading to Blackfriars Station, which is located close to the first place we're going to explore, St. Paul's Cathedral. So the first thing we needed to do before we go through that gate is get our tickets. I have to say buying your tickets here is a lot easier than buying tickets in Japan. Even though Japan had an English menu, it's just more complicated because of all the transfers. See, in Japan, if you don't have an IC card or some kind of card, You'll have to buy your tickets separately every time you transfer trains. But here, even if you have to transfer, you only have to buy one ticket. Four pounds for one ticket. Ah, pretty cool. That's your ticket. How does this go? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's better. I'm just gonna film this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we need to transfer here. Oh, always oh, cool. The tube in London. After we take this train, which I found out later that it's almost always full, we had to take another train to get to Blackfriar Station. If you're wondering how to navigate the subways here, it's really not that hard. The map or the routes are pretty clear. I think finding the right platform is a bit more challenging than anything. I'm gonna transfer. Now that we made it here in Blackfriar Station, all I needed to do is to navigate our way. You know, I still see people using an actual map, but in this day, all you need is a cell phone and the right app. I'm using this app that I've used so much in my travels. Without it, I'll just get lost. It's really amazing. You can plot out your route and it gives you access to all the popular landmarks, including restaurants and transportations, pretty much everything. Just a few yards from the station is the St. Paul's Cathedral. The St. Paul's Cathedral is one of London's tallest buildings and serves as the Cathedral of the Bishop of London. It's also a funeral site of important political figures like Margaret Thatcher and Winston Churchill. I believe Princess Diana is also buried here. Anyway, we wanted to go inside but the entry fee is way too expensive. 
It's about 22 pounds, around 30 in US dollars. It's priced that way maybe because it's one of the most famous and recognizable sites in London. The biggest church in London. Wow, there's a dome right there. The dome is 365 feet high and was the tallest building in London from 1710 to 1967. The history of this church is insane. I'm reading it right now and I just don't have enough time in this video to talk about it. Aside from the fact that this church was built in 1256 and due to the Great Fire of London in 1666, it was reconstructed in 1675. Now knowing that, I kind of wish I paid $30 to see what's inside this. But I don't think you're allowed to film inside, so the, the pictures on the internet will do. It's chilling. Nice. So this is the cathedral, Paul's Cathedral. And right in front of it is the Millennium Bridge, which we're going to go to right now. The Millennium Bridge is a steel suspension bridge. It's used by pedestrians to cross the River Thames. I read that Londoners nicknamed this bridge as the Wobbly Bridge because of its swaying motion. Although I didn't feel it at all, I think they've already fixed that issue. The bridge cost about 18.2 million pounds. It was built to commemorate the year 2000. Anyway, the bridge is 1,066 feet in length and the aluminum deck is 13 feet wide. Dude, there's like people on the shore. It's a waste of time though. Huh? It's a waste of time to ride that. Because we're gonna go there. That's a tower bridge. And somewhere here is going to be the Tower of London. And that person's looking for shells or something. I can't believe it's sunnier here. Oh, it's gonna be really gloomy all week. It's so when you cross a bridge coming from St. Paul, right next to the bridge is the Shakespeare's Globe. This actually wasn't in our list to see, but since it's along the way, here it is. Gotta <laughs> learn about Shakespeare. It's an indoor theater where they perform famous plays, I'm assuming. If I read this correctly, the theater was first built in 1599 and was later restored as the Globe in 1997. This is where we're going to go to and see if we can have lunch here at this place. It's called The Anchor. This is called The Anchor. It's a restaurant or pub suggested to me by the app I'm using. It's said that The Anchor started as a brewery in 1616 and was rebuilt 1676 because of the Great Fire. There are a lot of different information when they really established or rebuilt the pub but what really matters is that we couldn't go in because it was closed. Yeah, so if you've closed. been here and tried the food, just leave me a comment and let me know. Well, I guess we're not gonna eat here today. It didn't matter if the anchor was closed. We planned to hit two food markets anyway. And on the way to the first market, we stopped at this thing called the Golden Hind. I think that's the ship. There's the hind right there. The ship is right there. It's an old ship. The Golden Hind is a full-size replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship, who led an expedition to the Brazilian coast in 1578. That's actually during the time of Queen Elizabeth I. The original ship was disintegrated and broken up in the late 1600s and was made into a chair at the University of Oxford and a table at the Middle Temple Hall in London. This ship is revered due to its history and maybe because it hauled one of the largest treasure captured of 26 tons of silver and half a ton of gold, porcelain, coins and jewels, which was equivalent to around 480 million pounds. It's almost impossible to imagine all that treasure in this little ship. So about lunch. This food market is called Barrow Market. You know, every time I go to a food market, which is not often, I always fear the price of the food. But it's a good thing when I travel, I don't have a budget when it comes to food. I just buy whatever looks good and if I have enough space in my belly. 
I didn't know this, but the Borough Market is one of the largest and oldest food markets in London. It has different types of food, like these. It's like anything you want to eat. Whoa. Yeah, what is that? And it's a onion. You know, when you're here, it's really hard to decide what to eat. It's always like that in food markets. You just want to try all of them. But of course you can't. So right here, we kind of checked out the whole market first and decided from there. Oh man, look at this. Is that beef? Smells so These are meat pies, which are popular in England but it may be difficult to eat because there aren't any chairs or tables here. You have to stand and eat the food on the spot. So I had to pass on this one. Oh, look, cheese. After going through the whole market, which was not that big, I decided to get this. Oh, can you get it for me? This is called the big sausage. It has um, onions, grilled onions. I pretty much got the works. I got everything. It has like three sausages in there. I can't taste the I can't taste the sausage yet. It's more of the bread that I'm tasting. I'm gonna get another bite. What kind of dish is this? Is this Scottish dish? No, that's a traditional English. Oh, oh perfect. Is it the fact that you're wrapping meat around the egg? That's it. So it's confusing. Oh, I see. Okay. That's perfect. So that's five pounds fifty. Oh, yeah, very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is called a Scotch egg salad. It was claimed to be invented in the 19th century. It's a common picnic food in England. Originally, the egg is cooked over an open flame but I think this one is probably boiled. You know what's also interesting? Is that the egg has this dark orange color. It's clearly not a chicken egg, but most likely quail. The meat around the egg is sausage and it's coated with fried breadcrumbs. She said it's an English, English food. Should I just use my hands here? this is I know it's not chicken it's too small to be chicken right the meat I can't really taste the meat 
It's supposed to be pork. That's what it says. Alright. I can't really taste the meat. And the egg. I can't taste the egg. What can you taste? It's really hard to explain the taste. To be honest, the only thing I could really taste is pepper. I thought it would taste more like sausage, but it doesn't. It's not even salty, which I kind of wish it did. You put like pepper on top of it. I mentioned in my last video about this building called the Shard. Well, here it is. I didn't know what it was until we got here, but the Shard is one of the greatest architectural marvels in London. It's also the tallest skyscraper in the UK, and the fourth tallest in Europe. I'm pretty sure you could go to the top of this thing and get an awesome view of London, but we decided not to and moved on to the next market. I think this is the place, but <laughs> it's closed during the day, I guess. Um, I'm not really sure. Malt, Malt B Market is supposed to be right here. I don't see a market anywhere. I just found out that this market, the Malt B Street Market, only opens on the weekends. Okay, so we'll head to our next destination. Huh? Mm -hmm. So our next destination is the Tower Bridge. Another one of London's icons, and also one of the best known bridges in the world. This bridge was constructed in 1886, which took 8 years to finish. As you can see, the bridge is accessible by both vehicles and pedestrians. It also has two bridge towers connected together at the upper level by two walkways. I read that those walkways had a bad reputation before due to the prostitutes and pickpockets. It used to be an open air walkway and were only accessible by stairs. So they closed it in 1910 and was only reopened in 1982. It would have been awesome to see the bridge open up to let the big boats pass, but it didn't happen today, so we decided to take the tour instead. Tickets to the engine room. What the hell, really? What the? Oh, the tower bridge. Right? 